Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the WCW Saturday Night Review Series for the 27th of uh, November 1993. Uh, we move quickly towards the end of the year. Obviously the uh, press conference related to the build for the Flair vs. Uh, Vader match is, is here. Uh, basically, the press conference is Flair agrees to put his career on the line against Vader for the championship. Anderson and Roma open the program here. At the time, this is 10 years from the original Starcade in 83. Um, but Anderson and Roma are in a tag match here um, against uh, Austin and Austin and, and uh, Orndorff, which is an interesting team in and of itself. Uh, the aligning with Orndorff, which eventually happens, I believe this is actually the episode for it, if I remember correctly, um, is kind of foreshadowed in the number of times that uh, Orndorff shows up in the experience of Anderson and Roma over the uh, probably about six to eight weeks prior to this. Uh, Austin holding on to a headlock against Paul Roma for a couple of minutes here. Doesn't really give him a great deal of advantage. Match is pretty slow. Uh, Austin does end up selling quite big for an atomic drop, among other things. Uh, Roma goes to the outside uh, due to some double team work from Austin and uh, Orndorff. And again, the Austin-Orndorff team, I think, could have done something had they wanted to go further with it. They did not end up doing so. And I think I understand why, but at the same time, hard shots along the way um, with a roll-up from uh, Orndorff along along the pathway there. Hard uh, elbow drops along the pathway as well, and uh, uh, Orndorff tries to crank his man up pretty simply put, um, and there are several shots along the way there. Um, elbows and ultimately Roma manages to hit a knee um, along the way. Uh, pile driver uh, insinuation by Orndorff. Orndorff uh, manages to bring Roma back in and uh, does not get all he wants on the pile driver there but um, attempts to roll Orndorff up and Orndorff, or I'm sorry, Roma manages to get the backdrop there. Tag off to Austin and a tag off to Anderson. Things get a little more out of hand here. Uh, back elbows and punches by Anderson. Anderson looks to be in um, cheap, chief form, so to speak. Uh, Anderson sends Austin in, hits the spine buster on Austin, and uh, ultimately, from the top rope, um, Ro um, Orndorff comes off with a knee. This match is worth going out of your way to see if you've never seen it before. Uh, Roma actually stands there and kind of waits as his partner gets pinned and um, then checks in on him. It's kind of awkward. But knowing that the turn is coming, it makes sense along the way. Uh, we go to an enhancement talent match up next. Paul Lee is your enhancement talent uh, for the moment. Ice Train is the gentleman that he is facing off against. And this is about as good a match as you're going to get out of Ice Train. Ice Train probably has about two minutes in the match. Uh, power Slam, uh, his main move here. And um, then again, they do a press com. They go back to the press conference. Vader against Flair. Um, Gene Okerlund kind of hosting the press conference, asking Flair what the big deal is. What does he bring to the table? Uh, um, Vader says that he will put the WCW title on the line, even though he's held championships within the last couple of years on four separate confident continents. But Flair has to do something. Flair puts his career on the line. So you've got. Flair versus um, uh, Vader in what I consider to be Flair's last great match outside of the Shawn Michaels series that ends his career. Um, 
anyway, but certainly Flair's last great singles match that isn't career-related, to me, is right here. Um, if you've never seen the build for this, worth going out of your way to see. Dustin Rhodes, your U.S. champion and the Shockmaster against Harlem Heat. Not a match to write home about by any stretch of the imagination. Match is pretty simple, pretty short. I think they're trying to get um, Shockmaster over because they've got a contract on him, but it just never really happens. Uh, Harlem Heat cuts Rhodes off from his corner using various uh, submission style uh, maneuvers and other, um, you know, abilities to cheat along the way if needed. Uh, they are trying to get the most they can out of that whole process. Um, and it doesn't really work the way everybody intends. Um, then we kind of go to a victory in the Harlem Heat stealing the victory at the end. Obviously, they are being seen as the bigger, better team by their opponents. Ron Simmons up next in a singles match. He's uh, cranking up on, uh, you know, um, chin locks and the like. Eventually hits a spine buster of his own. Um, they have definitely dropped him off since he was WCW champion less than uh, a year and a half ago, um, which doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense. Speaking of not making a whole bunch of sense, we continue the push of the Colossal Kongs, Awesome and King. Uh, enhancement talent, big uh, double belly splash, in the corner, big vertical splashes, and the Kongs win. Not a big surprise there. We move towards the um, uh, tag team, I guess a six-man tag team match. Sting, Steamboat, and Flair versus the Nasty Boys and Rick Rude. They're given about 20 minutes here. Nasty Boys bail out. Nasty Boys really, I guess at this point, don't have too many main challengers here at the end of 1993. Kind of another booking flaw of WCW at the time. There, there's champions that don't have real quality challengers uh, going into the end of the year, the biggest um, deal of the year. Sting comes in, cleans house on the Nasty Boys for a minute. Rude and Sting have a feud that goes back uh, over two years at this point. Uh, by the end of it, nearly three by the time Rude leaves with the injury at the end of 94. Flair comes in against Jerry Sags, basic holds, including headlocks and hammerlocks and all of that. Cut off on Brian Nobbs, which eventually Nobbs get tag, gets tagged in, gets cut off in the babyface corner. Um, you know, we come back to the uh, after commercial and Rude and Sting are in there. Rude's got Sting in a bear hug uh, submission. Tag off by Rude, and uh, after wearing Sting down a bit, Sting still continues to be fighting from underneath. Sting manages a attempted, uh, I guess, attempted weird bulldog-looking thing that actually Sting looks pretty bad doing. Um, then we kind of see the the square off. Uh, Flair comes back in, puts a a figure four. On Rick Rude, and uh, they battle over that for a little while. Flair tries to get to his corner, but can't quite get there. Referee um, is is pretty frustrated. Knee drop across uh, the the chest of uh, Rick Rude along the way while he's in the submission hold. Nasty Boys manage to continue their their battle with Flair. Knobs and Flair. Flair bumping around for knobs. Flair bumps around for just about any.